Today on the podcast, guys, I have a bookshop that does good by writers, a book that I absolutely loved and that you get lost in, and of course, the weekly reveal to what magical book I have pulled down from my to-be-read shelf. All of that and more this week on A Novel Review. Hello and welcome to the literature podcast, A Novel Review. My name is Seamus, your host, and together we will discuss, dissect, and explore the wonderful world of literature, and the wonderful world of literature is a vast and dense jungle, so let's start making our way through, one book at a time. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Yeah, different week, new episode same host. Uh, My name is Seamus. I'm the host. This is a novel review. And for today, I am talking about Susanna Clarke's novel, Piranesi. Uh, But before I get into this book, I always take a moment to discuss any mantelpiece moments, something to highlight from the week past. And this week, I wanted to highlight a bookshop that I read about that, yeah, does good by writers. It's uh, it's a bookshop in East Sussex. It's called it's called Kemp Town Books, and once a month on a Wednesday, it opens its doors at five a.m. to allow writers to come. And now this isn't to, to allow writers to come and and simply write. This isn't this isn't like a workshop where you discuss your ideas or anything like that. They they do specify that it is sort of like a quiet, almost quiet contemplation space. Uh, and so yeah, just it, it, it just allows writers to come and sit down and have a place to write. And I guess it's kind of that idea of you're being watched as you're writing, even though no one's probably watching you because they're focusing on their own writing. But being in the presence of other writers, I think, sort of spurns you on to, to write more. And it's that wonderful thing of just allowing the opportunity because uh, like I read a lot of the people uh, that do it and they said that it is just it's sort of cozy it's inspiring it allows them you know many many of these people have children so the opportunity to once a month just be able to step out of the house at 5 a.m very early hour but also in a cafe bookshop and um the owner of the bookshop runs the cafe as well so she's there she says she generally makes a round of coffees and sort of second copies for anyone who wants them but of course she then has time to do some writing herself and it's a i think it's just a wonderful idea and i kind of wanted to just give them a shout out because i love it and i wish more places would do that and you know the bookshop doesn't actually open till nine so you're free from 5 a.m to 9 a.m to to write generally in peace which is just, I think, a fantastic initiative and a fantastic idea and, and one that I I guess I wanted to bring up so that other bookshop people or people that are affiliated with bookshops might get to hear this and spread the word and do this at their own local bookshop because it's a fantastic idea and I'd greatly encourage it. So, yeah, Kemp Town Bookshop in East Sussex. Love your work. A bit of housekeeping. If you would like to like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. But please do not feel obliged. This is all free. Simply enjoy the show. Okay, here we go. Piranesi, Susanna Clark. I'm excited for this because this was a surprisingly wonderful and, and inventive and fresh and enjoyable and lovely story. And I don't say surprising in a way that I doubted Susanna's writing style, but more I just kind of had seen it on shelves for, I guess, years now because it came out in 2021, but years, yeah, and was always sceptical. I don't know why, but was always sceptical. I guess when a book is sort of blown up that big, you kind of maybe naturally shy away from it, unsure of what the hype is, and so, yeah, I, I kind of came across it, needed a book to, to listen to. I listened to this book, uh, and it was absolutely incredible I, I i really enjoyed it 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 really was a lovely lovely little story it's not too long i think it was six hours to listen to and the audiobook rendition was quite a lovely charming and methodical read of the book so it was a bit slower than perhaps if you read it so it might only take five hours to read uh but yeah i should do a quick overview just for the listeners uh this book is about a character called piranesi and he is living in a great house and i say living in a great house like it's kind of like i know what you're picturing you're picturing living in a great house the same as what i pictured when i started listening and what it actually is is the world is a house 
three levels. The bottom level is ocean, the top level is sky, and the middle level is land, but ostensibly just, just rooms and, and sort of halls, as he calls them. Uh, and that is what the story is about. And it's about his experiences in the house, sort of he thinks there's only ever been and is 16 people that live in this world or have lived in this world. And he makes up, uh, does he make up one of them? Yeah, he does make up one of them. And there's another character called The Other who sort of he exists with and only sees occasionally. I think they have meetings twice a week. And it's kind of about his experiences in the house. And as the story develops, you realize that the story is not what it seems. And I guess maybe this is a spoiler and perhaps very early in the episode to be spoiling a story. But this is a fantasy kind of novel that also takes place in our world because it turns out that this sort of expansive, never-ending house is a parallel universe of sorts because it's not exactly the same representation of what Earth is. So that is what it's about. It's about this man, sort of experiences in there. And yeah, it was it was wild. It was interesting. And I guess this is probably my main gripe with audiobooks is when I started listening to this book, I had no idea what was going on because and maybe this was because I, I wasn't paying as close enough attention I should have been at the very beginning but I just sort of got very lost at the beginning and I was like wait what's going on because for years I'd seen the cover and it's kind of what is on the cover it's like a fawn kind of maybe it's not a fawn I think it is a fawn, something like that, or a, it's some kind of statue. And so in my mind, I just, with a name like Piranesi, I immediately just went to kind of like a Greek or Roman myth mythological story. And I thought that's what it was going to be about. I thought it was going to be this kind of like historical, mythological fiction story. And then I started listening to it, and it was about this guy in a house that seems to be infinite. And I was like, what is this? This makes no sense to me. And so that kind of confused me. And I guess so this was my main gripe with audiobooks is you don't actually have the blurb there to just sort of like read and be like, set you on the sort of the right path of what this story is actually about. And it, yeah. So for the first bit, I was a bit confused. And then a quick Google search alleviated the confusion and told me that this was a fantasy story. But I think that was probably one of the novel's most enjoyable and fun aspects was how it dealt with the genre and maybe it didn't do this on purpose but how it dealt with genre because i think if you were a lover of fantasy yeah fantasy you would love this book i think because it's sort of a parallel universe you could even say it touches in sci-fi the sci-fi realm you would probably love this book i think if you loved mythological historical fiction you would love this book because there's a few references in there and it's kind of got that really nice feeling to it and then I think because it deals, eventually in the story, it deals with professors and university students and sort of cults and the nature of a cult and what that actually means and sort of trying to summon up past uh, ceremonies and stuff to access different levels of almost consciousness and, and our understanding of the world. You could almost, and this might be controversial, but you could almost say it's dark academia as well in parts, which... I mean, all four of those genres are really fantastic. And I think if you liked all four of those genres, fantasy, sci-fi, dark academia, and what was the last one I was talking about? Fantasy, sci-fi, dark academia, and whatever the, th the fourth one I just previously mentioned was that now I've somehow forgotten. Well, yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Whatever you think of them, I think you'd really enjoy this story. And it was a really fantastic story because of that, because it didn't really have a, I think, strict genre. And I really love that about this story because I love all those genres. They're all incredibly interesting to me. And I think they're, yeah, really, really good ways to tell a story and really good avenues to go down. And this story kind of hit all of them. So that was a big plus for me. Something else that I absolutely sort of loved about this book was just it had this really dreamlike feeling to it really strange it was really intense atmospheric i think is the word and it really reminded me of this story uh called the lost estate or i can't pronounce his name it was called the lost estate i think in english and then the grand Molners or something like that Moulinaires by alain fournier uh french french novel which, which is why i can't pronounce the name Mol Moulinaires. and 
it just reminded me so much of that one because in that book it's a character sort of stumbling across this mythical house in 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 the forest but it's this really atmospheric dreamy dreamlike dreamscape prose and i think storyline and idea that really captures you in this story because you just you don't really know what's going on but you're kind of okay with it you're just being ferried along and it's incredibly beautiful and you don't feel stretched you don't feel you have to search too hard for these ideas you're just sort of ferried along and you're happy to be there and you're really enjoying yourself and it's i think it's just the atmosphere that this book presents itself with is just incredible and really really beautiful and it really reminded me of that story the lost estate if you want to check that book out as well i read that years ago and that was just like a fever dream of a book but really really nice as well mythological fiction mythological historical fiction that was the fourth one i can't believe i forgot that out of all the four that's probably my favorite no maybe not actually fantasy is probably my favorite but still mythological fiction who doesn't love mythological fiction the greek greek and roman myths anyway whatever i'm getting off track i think this story was so lovely because it also in well one it's incredibly well written susanna clark i'd never read read anything from her before and i know she's read, written one other book uh, which came out years ago i think it was 2004 but this one was incredibly well written so I, I had no notion of sort of her writing style coming in and it was i wouldn't say incredibly sparse but i'd say she's quite caring and careful with her words she's not over embellishing or over or fleshing out particular scenes too much but you get a really clear really clear image of what she's trying to say and of the scene as well and so that was something I really, really enjoyed. But I also loved the fact that it was an incredibly poignant book because as the story develops, this person, this character called Piranesi, you realize and you learn that he is not who he thinks he is. In fact, he's actually kind of been lost and he's this other character. And this is big spoilers, so tune out now if you don't want to know. But he's this character, Matthew Rose Sorensen. And what's actually happened is He's from uh, our world, planet Earth, or our reality, and he has suffered because this person that he calls the other has actually transported him to this uh, parallel universe, these, these great halls of these infinite halls. And because of that, he's technically imprisoned, although he doesn't really think of it now as imprisoned because over time he's kind of lost his mind and forgotten that this other reality exists, this reality of, you know, he's, he's, he's from London, so this reality of London. He forgets that it exists and he becomes this character Piranesi and he believes in the magic and the beauty of the house, which is one of the lines in the book. Uh, and it's a really beautiful line as well. But it's this kind of idea of like, one, what cults can do to you because... I mean, I'm personally terrified of cults. They are just such a weird thing. And I think the idea, especially as a parent, like receiving that call, you know, your daughter or son's just gone away for like a gap year in another country. And then all of a sudden they've been swept along by a cult and they're just never coming home. I mean, that has just got to be one of the most frightening kind of ideas. And that happens in this book. There's scenes that touch upon that in this book, uh, in the initial sort of occult aspect of getting to these parallel universes or trying to attain this level of of conscious being to be able to access i guess transportation between the worlds which is actually something that i quite enjoyed because a lot of books a lot of fantasy and sci-fi it happens probably more in sci-fi but they can sometimes get bogged down in sort of the explanation of why these things happen of how they're actually time traveling or something like that how they're time traveling how they're sort of jumping through these wormholes or whatever it is and I kind of like the fact that in Piranesi, she's Susanna Clark is just kind of like, yeah, they tried to access their being. You just had to be incredibly happy. I uh, think the time period in your life when you were incredibly happy. And then like through yada, 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 you're in another world. And there was sort of like no further explanation. And I really enjoyed that because we're not here for the science of it. We're not here to get bogged down in science and the reality of the fact that this probably isn't real. We're here for a good time. So I, I, I really enjoyed the fact that she didn't get stuck in that particular aspect of the book. But I think there was some commentary on it in that in this 
world, in these cavernous halls, in these infinite halls, there are statues. And the statues represent, of course, a real world, our world, because they're all busts and they seem to be busts of, and this is why I kind of thought it was historical fiction, they're all busts of, you know, Greek sort of mythological characters and stuff like that. And it's this almost idea of Plato's cave in that you can see the experience of what a statue represents, but you can't see the, the, let's just take a statue of a horse or something. You can see the horse. You can see the representation of a horse in these infinite halls, but you can't see the horse itself. And it's kind of that idea of Plato's cave in that you can experience what's in front of you, but you need to actually step outside the room, technically, uh, to, to experience the world. And towards the end when they're trying to rescue this poor character matthew rose Sorensen or piranesi what the, this character is trying to reason with him saying come back to the real world come back to the real world and he's like no i like i like it here this is my world i you know i i don't care that i was tricked to come here and i don't remember being tricked to come here and so this is my home and she's like but you know in our world we have the actual physical beings that you see here in statues like isn't that more beautiful and he's like no the statues represent the perfection the beauty they they never die they never wither they're here forever isn't that more beautiful and it's kind of this wonderful passage of reasoning between you know what's more beautiful like the permanence of statue and i guess art in general or the fleeting beauty of life and it's it's just one of these scenes you're like i was not expecting to have this in a in a a very short, very brief book about infinite halls in an alternate universe. And I absolutely loved it. I mean, I was really blown away by how fresh and, and, and ingenious this story was and how wonderful it was and how wonderful it was told. And I really hope she goes on to write many more books because if they're all as good as this, I would absolutely love it. But Piranesi, yeah, absolutely loved it. It smashed it out of the park. I was really surprised at how good it was, how much I enjoyed it. It was an incredibly fresh story. Like I said, it must only be a couple hundred pages because it took six hours to read. I saw it one audiobook of the year as well, and if that was told by the same guy that read it for me on Audible, then I completely agree with that because he did a lovely job telling the story. Um, I guess I should rate it this I'm going to say 4.5. It was a pretty good book and it really took me by surprise and yeah, like touches upon so many genres, which I love. Yeah, 4.5. I'm pretty happy with that. So what was I reading this week? This week I was reading this bright little number, Big Swiss. I'm still reading it. Uh, page 268 of 320 odd. So nearly at the end... It's by Jen Began. It's a very curious book. I'm not sure I like it. I'm not sure I dislike it. I just, I think I have to wait to the ending to give a really informed decision. But I think like some of the, just looking at some of the sort of reviews on the book really kind of led me and led me astray because made me laugh and think too much utterly addictive i laughed so hard it ached bold and funny dark comedy juicy salacious and compelling quirky contemporary like you know very much i came in thinking it was going to be really funny and ostensibly it's about a 45 year old woman who does some pretty i'd say dark things she definitely is in need of some support and i think she does some pretty immoral things and she's pretty immoral and careless with her life and i guess that kind of made me think it's not that funny it's actually kind of sad uh so yeah i like i'm not hating it at all like there's definitely nice moments and i think the writing style is actually pretty decent and it's a very quirky writing style and it's it's different it's fresh uh I'm not sure I'm in love with the main character. I think that's probably my main issue with the book. I'm not sure I'm in love with the main character because, yeah, she does some very questionable, immoral, unethical things that I, I personally don't think are that funny and I don't think really make the book that fun. I sort of makes me worried for her. But, hey, other people seem to like it, so, yeah, check it out if that's that, that interests you. Yeah, big Swiss. 
Now, if you have listened this far, please consider hitting those five stars. I would really appreciate it. Also, feel free to head along to the website and support the pod. But as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for your attention. So I think it's time to end this episode. And today, a bit of Ralph Waldo Emerson. And this is the great the Penguin Book's Great Ideas, Nature. So it's some essays on nature, and I'll just read you a little line. That's a lovely little line, and it goes... Nature in its ministry to man is not only the material, but it is also the process and the result. 